Why, good morning. good morning. All right, and happy Independence Day to everyone here. So glad to have you here, and also those joining us online, happy Independence Day to you. So, if you're looking for blessings, folks, you've come to the right place, okay? But it's your job to claim that blessing. So I invite you to stand now and sing along with us. I claim a blessing. Please stand. <coughs> I, oh I, oh I, I claim a blessing. I, oh I, oh I, I claim a blessing. In the morning when I get out of bed, I claim a blessing. I claim a blessing. I claim a blessing. Before I even lift my head, I claim a blessing. I claim a blessing. I claim a blessing. This is how I start the day, knowing good is on the way. I am claiming perfect health, love and laughter, friends and wealth. In the morning when I get out of bed, I claim a blessing. I claim a blessing. I claim a blessing. Before I even lift my head, I claim a blessing. I claim a blessing. I claim a blessing. With conviction undeterred and power of the spoken word. Take my life and redefine, 
break the shackles of my mind. In the morning when I get out of bed, I claim a blessing. I claim a blessing. I claim a blessing. Before I even lift my head, I claim a blessing. I claim a blessing. I claim a blessing. I lift my thoughts to higher ground, knowing miracles are all around. Each day unfolds just as it should, when I'm focusing on the good. Life is filled with opportunity. I wonder what good is coming to me. I claim a blessing. I claim it. Ooh, I claim a blessing. I claim it. Ooh, I claim a blessing. I claim it. Ooh, I claim a blessing. All right. You have made your claim. That is so beautiful. Well, folks, I don't know if you know this, but we have reached the center part of the year, the hump of the year, and we're on the downhill slide to Christmas. Okay, so take that as a thought, okay? <laughs> but we like to recognize birthdays at the beginning of the month, so if you have a birthday in July, we'd like to, you know, give you a happy birthday song gift. If you don't have a birthday, let's sing to those who do. All right. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, you are wonderful. Happy birthday to you. God is blessing you now. God is blessing you now. God is blessing you. Is blessing you. you are wonderful. Happy birthday to you. and many more. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Unity of Daytona Beach, a positive path for spiritual living. Welcome to everyone who's here with us in the sanctuary and everyone who is joining us online this day. Welcome, welcome. Today's daily word is free. Living from my Christ nature sets me free. Would you speak that with me, please? Living from my Christ nature sets me free. As a spiritual being, I am always free. I remember this at those moments I feel at the mercy of an unpredictable world. Take a breath in on that, yes. While I may not be able to control what is happening around me, I can take comfort knowing I don't need to. I don't need to. Doesn't that feel good? I don't need to. I am free to choose my response, but even more, I am free to meet life from my divinity, the breath of my spiritual power. In prayer, I claim divine ideas. I use my gift of imagination to envision the life that I wish to live and the gift of the will to make choices to bring it about. I speak affirmations to raise my consciousness and help create conditions for my highest and best outcomes to manifest. I find precious freedom realizing that life doesn't happen to me. Life happens through me. Today's daily word is inspired from the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verse 36. So if the sun makes you free, you will be free indeed. Please take a breath with me. Close your eyes and join me in prayer if you choose. I am free to meet life from my divinity, to raise my consciousness with the knowing that life is not happening to me but divine life happens through me. Thank you, God, for the wonderful teachings that we have, the truth to set us free. 
We are now in the presence of pure being and immersed in the Holy Spirit of life, love, and wisdom. We acknowledge your presence and your power, O blessed Spirit, and your divine wisdom. Now erase our human limitations and from the pure substance of love, bring into manifestation our world according to your perfect law. And because we cooperate with that law and allow it to be so, so it is. Amen. Please join me as we speak our Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And leave us not in temptation, but deliver us from error. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand as we sing together, Every Need is Fulfilled. <laughs> service where we have the opportunity to welcome anyone who is here with us this morning for the first time. So if you're a guest with us here today for the first time, our ushers have a packet of information for you. If you wouldn't mind just raising your hand so that they can find you and give you that packet of information. Do we have anyone here for the first time? Thank you, Sam. Okay, we have somebody back there just barely willing to raise their hand. That's okay. We're harmless, I swear. We're even welcoming. <laughs> Thank you all for being here with us this morning. It is our great joy to have your presence here with us this day. May you find something here that speaks to your heart and know how much we love you already and that you're welcome here always. 
All right, friends, our prosperity project continues. Let me have a whoop, whoop. Woo, woo, yes. Somebody's already been shopping over there, I know, in our prosperity book sale room that's going on. This is our second Sunday. We did great last Sunday. Now, Joy Kalis, this is her prosperity project that she initiated with all of our help, of course. It's never just one, right? But she's not here today, but she told me and for all of us to envision those books just flying off those tables. So can we hold that vision? Oh, yeah. Yep. All right. All right. Mary Ann has three, three, three. Can I hear four, four, four? <laughs> They're, they're wonderful, aren't they? Go in there and take a look around if you haven't. You, you'll be happy that you did. And don't forget, what is it, Christmas in July, and Ken already reminded us that we're on the downhill slide to Christmas. Could be a Christmas gift for someone, yes? Yes, there you go. So we have more prosperity projects coming our way as well. Our wonderful Deborah Striegel is going to gift us with a Hatha yoga class on Saturday, July 16th. It'll be in the fellowship hall at 11. Now she wants everyone to know that anyone can come to this. You know, here, I've been doing yoga for quite some time and they always just tell you, the best thing you can do is just show up and breathe. Now, everyone here in this room has already fulfilled that prerequisite. I want you to know that, okay? So you can do the very same thing on Saturday, July 16th. You will enjoy it, I know. So, of course, Deborah's not here to make her own announcement. She'll talk about it again next week. But, you know, a mat, water bottle, towel if you want it. Not that you're going to really need the towel, but if you should want it. She'll tell us more next week, okay? <laughs> as well as we also have July 17th. Now, look how divine timing works on this. We get to go expend some calories on the 16th, only to show up here on the 17th for the ice cream social. Now, how about that? God at work all the time, right? Yes. So our Youth of Unity is, doing, is providing us with our ice cream social as part of their prosperity project. So who doesn't like ice cream? No one. I know we're all going to be here for that. I don't even have to give you a little nudge, do I? No, just mark it on your calendar. Now, also, too, we're going to talk about our other prosperity project. Somebody's going to have to help me out. I don't have my notes, but it's August 5th, 7th, help, 7th. August 7th, hot dog days of summer coming up. <laughs> Royce Uliberry, Shonda Lambert, is that is their prosperity project that they're going to be sharing with us. But in the meantime, they also would like to invite everyone who would like to, to share a picture of your pet with them. So you can email your picture in to Shonda here at the church. And if you need more information of that, Shonda, raise your hand back there. Shonda's back there, and she can tell you how to get your pictures in. So we would love for everybody to participate in that. It does not just have to be a dog, by the way. I think we have, yep, one kitty cat up there. Whatever it may be, bring your hamster, your gerbils, whatever, turtles, whatever. We welcome them all, all right? <laughs> It'll be fun. We know that. All sorts of little goodies are going to go with that. <coughs> Excuse me. And now, my friends, I wanted to let everyone know that it has been shared with me that our beautiful Jennifer Lee Romero will be having her Celebration of Life party, or they are having it in her honor on Saturday, July 9th. Um, as many of you know, Jennifer made her transition in May, and they are doing a party for her on July 9th. Feel really loud, Bob. All of the details of it are on a flyer. They're back there on the back table in the sanctuary there. Please feel free to pick one up. Whether you're able to attend that in person or not, I just invite all of us, particularly now, always, and particularly that day, to send love and prayers for Jennifer and her family, please. Let's send her out that love energy, yes, and her family. And as well, friends, of course, our wonderful chaplains are here to pray with us after service. I believe it's Royce Uliberry and Ellen. They'll be available for prayer after service. Thank you.
accepted. There are no chains that bind me. I am free. I am unlimited. Right now, right now, I am free. I am unlimited. There are no chains that bind me. I am free, I am unlimited, right now, right now. I am free, I am unlimited. There are no chains that bind me. I am free, I am unlimited, right now, right now. I am free, I am unlimited. There are no chains that bind me. I am free, I am unlimited. Right now, right now. you to close your eyes if you care to just settle in with me here this morning as we prepare ourselves to receive all the gifts that spirit has to share with us this morning So as we begin to quiet ourselves a little bit, we just open ourselves up and allow. And we do that as we deepen our breath. As you just get yourself comfortable right where you're sitting. Know that you are loved and fully supported right where you are. And so we take a deep breath in together. We release that breath. We'll do this two more times together, please. Take a deep breath in. Release that breath. Another deep breath in. Release that breath. Just allowing. Allowing our minds to slow down a little. making a conscious choice to drift on down into our heart space. That heart that's open and expansive. With the knowing that we are indeed free and unlimited. Take another deep breath in. Release that breath. Today's inspiration for this time of meditation and contemplation comes from Reverend Eric Butterworth in a writing from 1979. It was a day he was sharing his lesson in the celebration of Independence Day. So I invite you to see what meaning these words have for you. He shares, unfortunately we have thought of freedom as an escape rather than as a creative act. 
the emphasis has been on freedom from something rather than freedom to do or be something. The emphasis has been on dropping out or running away. But the greatest freedom is the freedom to grow into the strong person we are created to be. Facing up to successfully coping with those things we otherwise try to escape from. Take a deep breath in. Release that breath. Freedom is not an escape. It is the choice to be strong, to understand, to find a transcendent way. Freedom is not isolating yourself from the darkness, but the courage to go out into the darkness and put your hand into the hand of God, which shall be to you better than light and safer than any known way. Take a deep breath in, release that breath. We find that freedom in the silence now. Take a deep breath in with me. Release that breath. Freedom is not isolating yourself from the darkness, but the courage to go out into the darkness and put your hand into the hand of God. Breathe in once again. Exhale. You shall know the truth, and that truth shall set you free. Take a breath. Release that breath. Join me back now in this time and this space. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen.
been wandering in this blind spot for so long. Every turn I take seems to be the wrong one. Everywhere I look, I see in this possibility. And all I need to have is just a little faith. Just a little faith when the storms of life are blowing. Just a little faith to get you where you're going. When you're inspired by the dreams inside your mind. But in your life seems so hard to find. Oh, you can make them all appear. Pull that picture loud and clear. And all you need to add is just a little faith. Just a little faith when the storms of life are blowing. Just a little faith Forget you where you're going Just a little faith Is all it takes To get your feet put back in place It's all you'll ever need, y'all know that you receive act as if you do believe don't give doubt a chance to call you can really have it all just a little faith when the storms of life are blowing just a little faith get you where you're going just a little faith when the storms of life are blowing. Just a little faith to get you where you're going. Just a little faith when the storms of life are blowing. Just a little faith to get you where you're going. Just a little faith. Thank you, thank you. Just as we were getting into that clapping, huh? <laughs> Got cut off. Just a little faith. Anybody working on just a little faith? <laughs> no storms of life are blowing, are they? No, no. No, not making light either. <clears throat> Today's lesson is inspired from my wonderful ministerial classmate and amazing New Thought Posse talent, Reverend Richard McDesey. Many years ago, I was going to ask Ken, how many years ago, Ken, was Richard here? He came and did a, a little Posse concert. Yeah, close to probably seven, eight years ago. Yes, yeah, so some of you probably saw him, were there with us anyway, he, and I had the blessing of having him as, as a ministerial uh, classmate, so we had a good time. So that song was floating around in my head last week, you know, doing what it does, and I'm like, okay, well, we're just going to use that then. So, and by and by, guess what? How spirit has it. It lines right up with today's lesson. No surprise, right? And thank you, music team, for honoring my request. I said, hey, Ken, <laughs> I know you already have a song picked, but guess what? Could you do that one for me today instead? And they said yes. So thank you, Dr. Becky. Thank you, Ken, Jim, everybody involved. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Shonda was back there saying, really? I already have a PowerPoint. She wants to change it again? Yeah, no, 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 no. No, she didn't. I'm just making all that up. Anyway. <laughs> but thanks for playing with me. 
So the main ingredient in the recipe for embracing our unlimited good and living abundantly is no surprise, it is faith. No surprise to us. This faith urges us to know who we are as unlimited spiritual beings. Knowing that truth, we can take an unequivocal, natural place in the creative flow in the universe. Say that with me. I am in the flow. I am in the flow. And here comes the rain. We are in the flow. <laughs> Little movement, right? We can be childlike up here today and have some joy this day. Yes? Yes. So this is our weekend. We know that our country is celebrating independence, acknowledging our blessed freedoms that we have. So I'm going to invite us all to take a breath on that with me. And for today, join me as we wake up to, once again, our spiritual identity to know the truth about ourselves and others, all others, that this is our freedom and that it is that very truth that truly sets us free. Our freedom is always going to come from within, not out here somewhere else. Can I get an amen? Amen because we know we live our lives from the inside out, no matter whatever other challenges want to tell us. That's the truth. So our series continues on with Reverend Ether Eric Butterworth's book, Spiritual Economics as Our Guide. And just to remind us all that we've stirred up so far and called forth the truths of living from the consciousness of prosperity to know that that consciousness of prosperity includes that knowing that God's substance is all around, everywhere, equally present at all times. There is no spot that God is not. And that we are truly always standing on holy ground every moment of our lives, whether we are aware of it or not. And that absolutely our fortune begins with us. It is indeed our responsibility to let live, act, and align with our spiritual identity, with our Christ nature. All of this adds up to our part of our prosperity consciousness. And then from that place, we have the ability to choose what we talked about last week, right judgment. Remembering what window have we been looking out of and that we are called to look out the window of the higher perspective, to see as God sees. And today, the other ingredients that we're going to add in are faith and a grateful heart. Eric shares this. I was so inspired as I was working with this lesson this week. Eric shares that faith is an expectancy, that you will always receive what you actually expect. Hmm. You will always receive exactly what you expect. You know, I have to ask you, right? What are you expecting? What are you expecting? And I pray that we are beginning to expect prosperity to show up in all of areas of our lives as we're moving through this process. And it's encompassing, isn't it? We align once again with the truth that prosperity is all about spiritual well-being. Again, that we live from within out. And Butterworth tells us this, that my faith simply tunes into and turns on the divine flow that has always been present. Now they took my headset from me, so y'all pray about my headset that it comes back in fine working order because I want to... <laughs> But I have to stay over here. I said I'm going to have to have Velcro on my feet this morning. So I'm going to try, but I'm going to move around a little bit. So but that divine flow has always been present. We're either in it or out of it, right? <laughs> in truth, we're never out of it. We only think we are. We have an absence in our consciousness about it. How many of us, or let me say it this way, how often do we give ourselves the message of, because remember, Butterworth said, faith is expectancy. How many of us have that thought or have had that thought of, don't expect too much. <laughs> don't expect too much. Don't ask for too much. And don't expect too much. A lot of old belief system wrapped in there, I believe. And then, does that not feel a little bit disappointing? 
but we'll turn right around perhaps and say, I don't want to ask for too much. I don't want to expect too much because I don't want to be disappointed. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Are you already disappointed? Of course. I think so. We're funny, aren't we? A little silly at times. But that's what the mind will do with this. It'll play a little few games with us. And for us to know again that even in those places, we are awakening and we are innocent. If we all had it sewed up, we'd be doing it, as they say, right? We are, we are not living abundantly or in a consciousness of prosperity when we are doing anything that's considered self-abandoning. Self-abandoning. Meaning, beating ourselves up in any way, any of those places where we feel unworthy, any of those types of things, any place where we're negating ourselves, faith is an expectancy. I like that. So I put in my notes, everybody put up your pinky finger. <laughs> we're going to do a pinky promise. There you go. Pinky promise. No more self-abandoning. Ain't got no more time for that. No. Just say no to that. And if there's a temptation to beat up on yourself, remember who you are. Remember who you are. An amazing child of God, created in the image and likeness of God. Generous, generous amounts of love, compassion, and understanding with yourself. That's part of our freedom. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verse 23, all things are possible to him that believes. Now, we know that a lot of these language are gender-specific, and we know that has nothing to do with it. It's all equal across the board, right? Butterworth shares that often this scripture is thought to mean, I believe in God, but he invites us to know that it is so much more than just that. We know God is not out there. We know that. And that we're not just asking for favors or hoping better yet, hoping that we have favor with God. Now, how many of us grew up, I know I did, thinking, okay, well, if I pray a little bit more, God's going to like me a little more, I have a little more favor with God, and maybe I can get, mm -mm -mm -mm. <laughs> But rather, God is a life process by which we live. Notice the difference. God is a life process by which we live. God is the transcendent whole of things which you are an individualized part of, creating in the image and likeness. And I thought these are our unity principles popping out all over the place. It's our first basic unity principle. God is, and it brings in the second one, I am. God is and I am, that we are divine. And from the book he shares this, the whole universe of innate substance is centered in you. Can you believe that? The whole universe of innate substance is centered in you. There is nothing you can do to add to it or take away from it. Whoo! That's good news. That's good news, isn't it? Any of those places where we've been thinking less of ourselves and holding on to whatever mistake we thought we made, thinking we're less than, it is not true. We have places to grow? Absolutely. Absolutely doesn't change who we are. That leads to the inescapable thought. Hold on, folks. This is Eric now. Shocking conclusion that the universe was no more centered in Jesus than it is in you. Ooh, take a breath. Of course, here it comes. That doesn't explain the quite obvious difference. I said drum roll, but Jim's not over there. Drum roll. Mm -hmm. Jesus, in his disciplined consciousness, was centered in the source. That's the big difference. While we usually are centered in various levels of limitation, that's the difference, friends. I wrote in here, tell it like it is, Eric. <laughs> he says, this suggests an excellent definition for the word faith, consciousness centered in the universal source. Butterworth says, my faith simply tunes into and turns on the divine flow that has always been present. Thank you, God. Yes? Faith is not a vague process of believing in something, not just I believe in God, and I liked this. It is rather a positive act of turning on something. 
positive act of turning on something. So I put in here the explanation is, I can go into a dark room. I can believe that electricity is there. But if I don't act, there is still no light. Get it? I have to take an action. He says the ideal is not believing in, but believing from. Believing from. You begin with the assumption that the presence, like we've been building up this prosperity consciousness, saying that God's substance is all around, everywhere we are. We are standing on holy ground. No place that God is not. So we have the assumption of the presence in which you live, move, and have your being. That your faith is an activity that goes forth from that basis. It is believe in a believing attitude that is made real and a creative by reason of your attunement with the creative flow. And I love this. He shares, faith tunes into reality, God reality. Faith tunes into reality and releases the imprisoned splendor. The imprisoned splendor. Take a breath. Woo! He says that faith tunes into reality. Faith tunes into the God reality and releases the imprisoned splendor. Friends, faith doesn't change things at all. It changes the way that we relate to them. Can you see that with me? And it will be as you believe. It will be as I believe. And as we recenter our thoughts in the awareness of the abundance, we become more synchronized in the process of that eternal substance, and then we begin to experience it. It starts to show up in our lives in all sorts of different ways, some little, some big. We've all been noticing it, I hope, and pray. It shows up as improved health. It shows up as more joy in living, more income a feeling of being valued, feeling love, on and on and on, peace and calm. And abundance is an ever-present reality. It becomes a way that we live, not just something we get to experience every now and again. How about it? Yes? Yes. Do we believe is our question. Do we believe? And it calls us up high. And it calls us up high right now, in particularly, I want to say, with all of the worldly events that are going on, when the storms of life are blowing, just a little faith. And Eric says in a bold way, the most widespread disease of our time is I can't itis. I can't itis. I can't because I'm sick. I can't because I am poor. I can't because this is how I am. Oh, we use that one a couple of times, huh? I can't because there is no opportunity. I can't because there are no jobs. But what does he tell us about that? And in all those places, even in, in all of our, our I can't itis, I'm saying to us now, we are innocent in that too until we raise up in consciousness to be able to see it, feel it, and know it differently. But what does he tell us our problem is? He tells us that the problem lies in faulty self-evaluation. That's all. And we can change that. We can change that. Isn't that good news? So I invite us this day to notice where are we saying I can't? Either out loud or in our thoughts. And then let us start to shift just a little bit. Because we said we only need a little bit of faith. So we can shift just a little bit. And that starts with awareness and it starts with noticing. To really know ourselves as these limitless spiritual beings living in a limitless spiritual universe. God's substance all around us. You're going to get tired of me saying that, aren't you? 
This series isn't going to end for a little while yet. You got a little more of me yet. But to know ourselves that way. And my notes say now, wait for it. Here's even better news. Wait for it. Endowed with the whole potential energy flow of the universe. Endowed with it. Give me some more, I say. How about you? Wake me up to it, really, is the truth of it. Awaken me. Let me climb up a little bit more on my spiritual awareness and my consciousness to let go of the I can't and see yourself again as God's living enterprise. Can you speak this with me, this affirmation? It says, I can because I am. Let's do that again. I can because I am. And notice how that I am is written, all capitals, because what does that tell us? That I am is our Christ consciousness. It is our spiritual identity. That's the whole reason that we can't. This isn't for me. This is for the truth. It is important to remember that any perceived need has no built-in limitation. That, that caused me to think for a while. It is important to remember that any perceived need has no built-in limitation. There are only limiting thoughts about it. Again, question your thoughts. Inquire. Be curious. Faith is an expectancy. We do receive what we believe. And Jesus demonstrated that for us time and time and time again. And he came apart for a while, often. He taught us that, too, to practice the presence of God. Because that is the place where we gain our strength. That is the place to know ourselves as divine beings. Butterworth shares, not God made man, but man expressing his divine potential. That is our great example. Butterworth says, how many people go through life with the consciousness of holding a tin cup under the Niagara of God's plenty? No tin cups for us, huh? No thimbles, no tin cups. Give me some big old barrel. <laughs> Something huge. That's right. <laughs> no more small fry expectancy. That usually manifests as living on a string, they say, a make-do kind of an attitude. I can't afford it level of consciousness and breathe into all of that with no self-criticism or self-judgment, just awakening. Because here's more good news, friends. If there is a need, there is always an answer in infinite mind. The need reveals that the answer is already on its way to you. It's waking us up, right? Faith is your yes answer to that need. That ours is to practice the presence and to be in that creative flow. He says, a true desire is not to have, but to be. So take us away from that place of where we think we're needing something and move it on over to let us be who we are and then receive from that place, right? True purpose of desire is to unfold our wholeness, that prosperity that is our spiritual well-being, that we came here to be expansive and not constrictive in any way. The truth is that you can grow, you can improve, and you can be prosperous. You can succeed if you believe, if you believe. You are a rich, creative, spiritual being, and you can never be less than that. We can frustrate that potential left and right all over the place in our human condition, but we're never less. Butterworth says, but within you now and always is the unborn possibility of a limitless experience of inner stability and outer treasure, and yours is the privilege of giving birth to it, and you will if you can believe. It's a privilege. Do you ever think about it like that? It's a privilege to live this out. 
Our next ingredient for living abundantly, our recipe is a grateful heart. Now, I think that we do that pretty well here in this community and beyond, but let's take a little bit deeper of a look at this and see how this unfolds because he called me up high on this one too. He says, we can put on, or I said, we can put on our attitude of gratitude right now. And let's look at gratitude not just as an emotion or a feeling, but as a, a causative energy, a causative energy. It is an effective key by which we meet life as a victor, as powerful conquerors, as it were. Butterworth says it's a requisite for high living wellness. He says, God is not waiting on us to give thanks. We are not changing God with our gratitude. He said, God is not disturbed by us not saying, God's not saying about us, oh, they didn't say thank you, what an ingrate. <laughs> that's not going on. We may say that, <laughs> but that's not God. Friends, it makes no difference to God. God, the good, absolute, unchanging. Where does the difference occur? What cause of, what's happening to us when we are grateful? That's the causative energy. That's what's happening. God is. So we're not changing God at all. Well, somebody always say, we're no surprise to God. Well, we're no surprise to God, right? <laughs> but the change happens in us and in our consciousness, and then it shows up how we live differently in gratitude. He says, Meister Eckhart probably shocked his colleagues in medieval times when he said, I never give thanks to God for loving me because he can't help it. Whether he would or not, it's his nature to. You see, gratitude is not for God. You are not obligated to thank God for your life, for your job, or for your prosperity. However, giving thanks is an important part of your consciousness that keeps you in awareness of the oneness with the divine flow. And when we understand this, you can see how a grateful heart does not need something to be grateful for. It just is. It just is. So I thought, oh, we're stepping it up a little bit more now, aren't we? We're no longer just waiting to be grateful for something. And I thought, just imagine wearing that sign, grateful heart working here. <laughs> you know, you see road work signs, men working on the road. No, grateful heart working here. And then I thought, <laughs> you know how we always see those placards that says baby on board? Now we all know that the baby's consciousness, they got it going on, so we got to give it to them. But instead of that placard just saying baby on board, what if we had grateful heart on board? Grateful heart on board. So Shonda and I might have to work on a bumper sticker or something, I don't know. But grateful heart on board, how about that? Grateful heart on board. Not waiting on anything, it just is. I thought maybe we'll hang that sign up in our prosperity project room out there. <laughs> so did she put up a slide? Yep. Grateful heart on board, because that is the causative agent. Scripture invites us into what the disciple Paul said, that in all things give thanks. And we know this. It's not that we're giving thanks for all things. We're, we are in all things giving thanks so that we can stay with that grateful heart. Gratitude is that causative energy. So we are here to put that energy to work for more good, for more good. That's what we've been called here to do. We're lighting up the place. Have you noticed? We are, each and every one of us. By giving thanks in all things, we recenter ourselves once again in that ever-present God substance, knowing once again that God is our all-sufficiency, supporting us and loving us, working on our behalf at all times and that the universal flow is working on our behalf at all, on, uh, at all times as well, and that it is unchanging. And for this truth, for that truth, we can stand with a grateful heart. Can you see that with me? In all things, give thanks. It's an absolutely powerful way to live from a perception of aligning with the highest and the best 
because we are consciously choosing to align with what? With the one presence and the one power, the creator of the universe. And from that place, we get to experience that opulence that I've been talking about. Opulence. Anybody want a little more opulence in your life? Mm -hmm. Two hands up over here. <laughs> Friends, we are in the expressing business. We're here to demonstrate, to show up. And it's an opportunity for growth. And growth is absolutely what this is all about. And I believe more than ever that our world is crying for it. And we have been called to shine the light because we know these truths. We're just being reminded. So I'm going to invite you now just to close your eyes for just a minute and just experience what does gratitude, what does a grateful heart feel like to you? Not searching for things to be grateful for. Not an emotional reaction to a blessing that you can count on. It is an energy that you stir up from within. As you know and align with the truth of who you are. And that you're fully supported every moment of your life. So this day you choose to be in alignment with that creative flow. Take a deep breath with me. Release that breath. Notice that feeling. Recall it. Call it forth in the morning when you wake up and numerous times throughout your day. we come back to this place in this space I'm going to ask you once again to affirm with me I can because I am I can because I am there is a grateful heart on board there is a grateful heart on board dear ones you are blessed you are loved you have a grateful heart on board you can believe it with just a little faith Embrace your good. Live abundantly. And so it is. Amen. So as we celebrate Independence Day tomorrow, it's important to know that real freedom is based in the truth, the truth about God. For it is that truth that sets us free. So I'm going to invite all of you to join in singing the chorus portion of this song. You know the tune and you know the words. It's glory, glory, hallelujah. So when we get to that point, please join us. Let's celebrate life. <laughs> Let's celebrate life, let's give it a cheer. Let's celebrate freedom, peace, and love each day of the year. Let's run up a flag so people will know that life is great when you start living. Ready, set, go. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. The truth that set us free. Let's celebrate life. Let's give it a song. Let's celebrate peace and love and freedom all the day long. Let's fire salute so people will say it's great to be alive and living. Hippie purple, glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah, the truth has set us free. Let's celebrate life, let's give it a toast, 
Let's sing about freedom, peace, and all the things we love most. Let's send up a flare so people will shout. Life is great when you start living. Come create a life for living. Celebrate the life you're living. Sing it right out. Please stand. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. The truth that set us free. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. The truth has set us free. time in our service where we have our opportunity to share our gifts and our ties. So whether you're sharing here in the sanctuary or you're giving online, please join me now in our affirmation of abundance. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God, and it is so. Almost made it. With our grateful hearts, let's give thanks and gratitude to our ushers. Okay. Thank you, God. Yes, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for the teachings, the knowing. I can because I am. And indeed, I have a grateful heart on board. That causative energy for more good. So we bless these gifts and the giver knowing that they go forth to create more of God's good here on planet Earth. We honor all prayer requests in our prayer box, claiming and knowing the highest and best outcomes for all. Join me once again as we say thank you, God. Thank, thank you, God. God. And it is so. And it is so. Please join me now as we speak our prayer for protection together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. God bless you and your families. A very happy 4th of July, Independence Day to all. Please stand and sing our peace song. on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. With God our Creator, we are family. Let us walk with 
with each other in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow. To take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally.